Hello everyone, welcome, Lotfi here. So we're gonna go over this mastermind operations Excel sheet, which essentially shows you how to forecast um, sales from your consulting business. Now, just as a preface for this video, this is for people who sell a high ticket offer. And I know many people now, especially with you know some others and other people promoting it, they're switching over to a recurring model. So typically, what most people have been doing for the longest time is selling a one-off high ticket offer, for let's say 5,000, 3,000, just as a one-time sale. And most people will typically just get access for, you know, six months, 12 months, or just um, like kind of lifetime access. But um, from what we see now, more, more people are moving over to a recurring model. And if you haven't already, um, I recommend you do that. Otherwise, this, she is not gonna be useful to you. But also generally just moving over to a recurring model is better because um, it allows you to build longer term relationships, have the same clients, and most importantly, have recurring revenue, which is what I've noticed most people in our space really lack is that, you know, recurring revenue. Yes, we are able to make one-time sales, a lot of one-time sales, a lot of cash flow for sure, but just having a core base of 100, 200 clients, 300, that are actually able to pay, you know, 5K, 3K, 10K or more per, per year, um, then that's gonna be ideal. So this kind of assumes a yearly model. So assuming you know, you're know you selling like a three grand a year, 5K a year, um, an annual kind of recurring model. But yeah, once again, like I said, ideally you move to that model first. Um, that, that should be number one. And then you, you can use tools like these. And I can make another video on how to do that, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, but here I'm just gonna talk about how to actually track the money side of things. So. The first thing, so by the way, all the gray elements are pre-calculated and pre, pre-made pre for you. The only thing you need to type in is the white stuff. So you wanna start here with the key. Uh, I should probably change the color but to make it stand out, but essentially this is where you start and this is where we um, start with the risk. So risk is essentially, um, you know, your risk of default. So let's say, you know, 100 clients you expect to renew, but um, only 10, 10 of them actually renew. Or let's say 100 grand you expect to collect, but you only collect 80,000. So here we do with the cash, so how much money you expect to make that month. Now obviously there's gonna be payment plans, there's gonna be people canceling, there's gonna be all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna put a 30% risk um, as a default. And this is something you can change over time as you notice over the next few months, what your actual risk is. So if it is like 15%, your actual risk, then of course you can just come here and change it to 15%, but I'm gonna put it, put it as 30, you can make it 20. I would put it at least at 20 just to start out with, and then you can adapt it as you go along. So that's the step for the first thing is the risk. Um, now we're also gonna um, look at the price of your program. So FEM stands for front end mastermind. So this is just your, your main program. The first thing you sell to people, 5k, 10k, how, how much it is. This is the first thing you sell. So we're gonna put the price here of how much that is. Now, other people, they will also have back-end masterminds. So we can technically update the sheet as well to include back-end, but I don't wanna make it too complicated by having multiple things. But a similar thing, I guess you could just duplicate the sheet and make the same for a back-end instead of you know, congesting all into one thing. So if you do have a backend and you want to track it the same way, just make a copy of the sheet, call it backend mastermind um, operations and essentially do the same thing. Next we have member cap. So member cap is essentially how many, the maximum amount of people you want to have in your mastermind. So with this model recurring model, we want to set a cap. So we don't want just, we don't just want to say, um, like, you know, an infinite amount of people can join a program for many reasons. One of them is, you know, just to have some kind of scarcity um, and some kind of limit to who can join. And this kind of increases the value of program because, you know, less people can join, the more valuable it kind of is perceived if it's actually valuable to begin with. So you want to have some kind of cap. Um, and I recommend, you know, you can start with any number, but the, the goal is that you kind of hit that number. So you know, what? so you want to start with the income goal. Um, over what period of time do you want to hit this member cap? It could be two or three months. You might want to do like a big promotion to fill it up. So, you know, you could start with like 20 or 30 or 50. Um, it's really up to you how many, what your initial 
member cap will be. Now, once again, you can always increase this member cap, but you want to have a kind of increase in stages. So you want to have like a launch. Okay, we're going to let 30 people join or 50 people join. And then you close it up and then, you know, you work with those clients and then you open it up again, you know, that kind of thing. So member cap, I just put out 15. So these are all example numbers. Um, don't take anything serious here. You don't, you can, you're, you're supposed to change everything um, in the white boxes that is monthly churn so this is how many people we expect to leave every month and it's something you can change once again but i'm just going to put it two percent so we're assuming a an average of two percent churn per month so obviously this is going to be a an annual membership right so um you know it should it, it would technically be technically be 24 percent per year of churn so let's say you start out the year with 100 people 100 clients um, and then the churn would be 24%. So you would lose 24 people. So that's, that's, that could be high, could be low, depending on how good your program is. And once again, you can change this around um, once you get into some actual data. And then you can kind of, you know, because this is supposed to be an accurate forecast. And you don't want to be too optimistic and, you know, and put a, you know, a 0.5% churn or 0.1%. Um, when in reality, you might be hitting 1% to 1.5% churn, especially in your first year. So we want to put it just at 2% just to be safe. And it's even if you don't um, hit the churn, right? Like we, we, it's always better to just have some extra members anyway. So let's say it does happen to be 1% churn. Um, you know, all that's going to happen is, um, you know, you, you're going to have an extra 12 people in your mastermind at the end of the year. You know, so you can't really go wrong with that. So, yeah, so we, we keep the churn as 2% for now. And then you can, well, this can be adjusted. And we use this number in every calculation here. So that's why these numbers are all used here. So just have a think about these numbers first. Uh, mainly these two, um, the top and bottom one, you just want to just keep that for now. Um, once again, you can go a little bit lower for the risk, maybe 20%. Um, maybe you can look at your past data of payment plans. How many people are completing payment plans? Um, how, if we have done any kind of renewing in the past, how many people are actually renewing? So let's start on the top for January as an example. So these are automatically calculated. Once again, the green ones are automatically done for you. You're only filling the white ones. Um, so expected cash is essentially how much um, cash do you expect to collect? And we calculate this by looking at um, how many renewals you expect to um, generate that, that month, um, as well as replacements. Um, so expect, so it's a B4 times 21. So essentially the renewals multiplied by how much your program price is plus, um, you know, the actual replacements we expect you to generate in that month to essentially hit your member cap. Now, once again, it's going to say 14 here which could be a lot for you in the beginning. So once again, you can just kind of adjust that as needed. So maybe that month you only want five. So, you know, you can just take this down to like six and then you can see how many replacements you actually need. So first, you know, so we always calculate each month, how many empty spots do you have? And we look and we do this by starting with the total number of active members. So how many active members? So an active member is someone that's basically paying um, right now, so as like an active member, someone that's in the group and they're paying. Now you need to make sure that if you have any group of any kind, you don't just look at a group number and just call that all, call all of them active members, especially because, you know, assuming you're on the coaching consulting space, which you should be if you're watching this video, um, it can change, right? Because, you know, people join with team members, some people cancel, you forget to remove them. You might have your own team inside there. You might have some friends or some other people inside. So you want to calculate the actual paying members and only put that number inside here. So make sure it's only the active paying clients. So you remove yourself, your team, any friends, any people who have canceled, any people who said they're going to potentially cancel or you want to remove all that and only keep those numbers here. So we want to keep it very, very accurate. So upcoming renewal. So ideally you should be tracking this. So this is how many people do you expect to renew in that month? So let's say January last year, you signed up three people for $10,000. Then, you know, then this month, you know, we, we would have three upcoming renewals because they paid last year. 
um, and a new, and the truth is, you know, we expect them to renew. And, you know, and the truth is we actually set up systems in place beforehand to actually predict if they are going to renew to begin with. But here, you know, we're just keeping it very simple where, you know, three people signed last year, you know, the same three here this year, they should renew at $10,000. Um, and then, you know, we also calculate in any replacements to add in. And we also accounting for the churn. You remember the churn here, the 2%. So we're looking at empty spots. So you have, you know, 14 empty spots plus a 2% churn. Um, so, you know, you technically need to get, you know, like 16 clients that month, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And once again, you can change that, right? You can change them around to whatever fits what you want. So total act. So you fill in this number, how many renewals are coming up this month? And you do this at the beginning of the month, like it mentions here. And, you know, once again, you might see there's only two or three, you, you plug that in, you plug in how many active members are there at the first day of the month. Because last month, some people would have canceled. You would remove some people. We would have added some people. We have active members. And now you're going to have an accurate number of how many people you need to sign up this month. So here it would be essentially around 16 people. All right. So, well, actually you you need to sign up 14 people. Sorry. So, because the two, they, they should technically already renew, right? Um, so you, the main number to focus on is 14. So this is your number. This is like, um, I should put this in, in like a box or something, but this is like the golden number, which is 14. And it's the only number you need to look at at the beginning of the month, which is, okay, well, we need 14. And if you don't hit this number, then you're going to be running behind. Your mastermind is not going to be filled up. You're not going to be um, kind of up to date with what you need to be up to date with on. So um, just this number here, I don't think I talked about that, which is, expected cash minus risk. So this is this cash amount. Um, this is the total sales we expect you to make in that month. And then the second one is we minus risk, which essentially is this number here. So, so this is like a more realistic version where we remove the 30% risk of defaulting. So this is the amount of cash we expect. And we remove the risk because once again, you want to be an expert predictor of your cash flow. You don't want to be too optimistic and, and you don't want to be too pessimistic either, but you want to be kind of in the middle. So we start off high and then we lower it uh, and change it as the months go by. So you'll see here, I put this number here, which is actual risk. So as the months go by, you know, you can kind of change things around and, you know, you might even be at 10% or lower and then this number would change and there would be a closer gap between expected and uh, expected minus the risk. So that's this part. So this is the beginning of the month. So on the first day of the month, or even the day before that, you come in here, you do all this stuff, uh, which is just two numbers. It's very easy, right? You just put in, I, I expect uh, three people and I have 10 people here. And then you just get this number and then you just kind of get back to work. End of the month, you kind of come back here and then you just fill out the rest. So this is the beginning, this is the end. Um, you only come in twice a month for like two minutes at a time. It's very easy to kind of do this. Um, actual cash collected. So this is at the end of the month where you come here and you essentially put in how much cash did you actually collect? And this is cash, by the way, this is not revenue. This is, um, not, you know, any other kind of number. This is only actual, um, cash collected in that month, All right? Total cash. So this is front end renewals, new clients, payment plans from last month, um, payment plans from three, all, all of that cash, everything we put in here, very simple. Um, and then we put in how many actual renewals did you get that month? So you expected to, but how many did you get? Did you get one, did you get zero? Um, or did you get more somehow? Uh, which I don't think is possible, but did you get maybe that maybe, maybe you got, you could, you, could, you can only get essentially in this example, two, one or zero. So, yeah, or um, maybe more people left in that month somehow, but I don't know, because that's not possible because we're assuming a 12 month rotation. So they can't leave in a month where they didn't join. So it would be two, one or zero. You put that number in here and then we have a percentage. So now we have real numbers here, which is, this is our renewal percentage. So if one in two um, renew, then you have a 50% renewal rate. And that's why we, and then you can kind of calculate that with next month if if that kind of fits your budget and what you're looking for. 
Next, we look at actual replacements. So obviously, remember, this is the key number, which is 14. This is the amount of replacements you need to get in that month. So here you put in the actual replacements that you received in that month. So maybe you ran some ads, you did organic, you did some webinars, some events, some, um, you know, some JVs, whatever you did to get clients. And maybe, you know, you got like four or five or six. So, you know, you put in that number or maybe you hit the actual number, which is even better. Um, and that's it. And then here it calculates the risk, which, uh, which is here are the new replacements required, um, essentially for next month, which is around 13. Um, here are the new total active members. So it takes into account how many people you actually signed up in a month. So here's the new total active members and here's the actual risk. So it looks at from the cash collector, the expected, uh, uh, expected cash versus actual cash. And then it gives you the actual risk. And I recommend giving it two to three months at least before you update this number by any significant measure, um, just to be on the safe side. So that's about it for this video. Um, this is very straightforward to use. Um, I will add in some notes as well. So you can, just in case you kind of forget what some of these numbers mean. Um, I will have some notes inside here so you can kind of hover over it and just remember what it is. But that's, that's it. For, that's, that's all there is for today. So, you know, ideally, you know, you move or you have some kind of a recurring element to your coaching program. And yeah, so if you are in a position where you are looking for help to kind of get this number, which is the replacements, then um, I recommend you reach out to me or through my website where we can kind of have a chat and show you the strategies we use to get high ticket clients and essentially fill up um, these numbers here. So this is this is what we specialize in, is helping you fill up your mastermind, your group coaching program, your high ticket offer. And we've done this at various scales. You know, we've done this at scales of, um, you know, our top clients are like two to three million a month. Uh, we have clients where we help them get to 100K, 200K, 300K a month in a matter of months as well. Uh, we have clients at all levels of revenue ranges because everyone has different goals and everyone wants different type of things. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're able to help almost everyone um, kind of do that. Now, typically, you know, we, we, we would speak with you first, look at your business. So you should be selling high ticket. You should already have sold multiple six figures, at least two, 300K of your program. Um, you don't have to have that. If you have some solid proof of concept you want to start with, we can do that as well because, you know, we, we, have, we have clients where we've, just from scratch, help them grow to 30K, 40K a month um, with no prior offer as well. So it depends on a situation, which is why we'll, we'll speak with you first to see if it makes sense where you're at, what you have going on, what your experience is, all that kind of stuff. So this is one of the key things, as you have noticed, right, that holds people back from even filling up the mastermind, which is the replacements. How, or just generally, even if you do one-time sales, getting those new clients in in that specific month um, and that's what we specialize in and we do it primarily through ads. So advertising. So we primarily run Facebook ads. Um, so we typically start by crafting a seven figure VSL. And this typically does 70% of the heavy, um, you know, the weightlifting. Um, and then we launch our ads, um, which kind of does the rest. Um, cause most people, they look at the ads first and then they look at everything else. We look at the funnel. We, we build a seven figure VSL with you first. So that way you're built for success before you even start. And then, you know, we look at automations. We have extremely powerful test automations we've done with hundreds of clients now. So we know exactly how to set everything up. We have the templates, we have all that stuff. Anyway, I hope I didn't make, uh, mean to make this sound like too long, but if you want information on this, you can just book a call and we can have a chat We we'll, and you know, I'll show you how things work. Um, and give you some advice um, absolutely for free. So yeah, that's all I have for today. If you want this document, um, it should be attached down below and you can kind of download it and use it. If you have questions, you can also join the group and feel it's a free group. You can ask questions. I'll personally be responding. Um, but yeah, I hope things go well for you. Um, and I look forward to having a chat with you. If you are in that position, if you're running out, you have a high ticket offer, you want to get more clients into your program then I'll be more than happy to have a chat with you. Either way, speak soon and I will see you soon.